night, Mr. Barnes. Now that bit of night, Frank Kenny got his kneecaps done, yeah? That's right. I've already told you where I was. A couple of things aren't clear. Like what? Why don't you tell us everything you did that night? I get it. Keep me talking. I'll make some slip up and say to you, oh, by the way, I was out flattening your only witness's knees. Dream on. I hope this snout of yours hasn't got us up here in a wild goose chase. Oh, well, don't worry, she's reliable. Yeah, she's about as reliable as her next fix. This is it. Let's just see what she's got to say, shall we? Reliable. Susie. She's alive. Sandra? Sandra, it's Susie Croft. Hello, I need an ambulance, please. Um, flat... 87. 87. That's 87 Jasmine Allen Estate. A Detective Sergeant Bolton, Sunhill CID. Yeah, it's a suspected overdose. OK, thank you. Someone's been having a go at her. It's not fresh. The needle marks are. Heroin? That's what she uses. Was she going somewhere? She just gave me the address, said she wanted me round here before ten. Maybe she was expecting someone to pick her up. I don't know, she didn't say anything else. When did she call? Uh, about eleven o'clock last night. What, you've no idea what the tip-off was? No, she just said she had something to show me and some information on a Jasmine Allen dealer. Who? Well, I imagine that's what she was going to tell me. Well, she's obviously packed in a hurry. Everything's just stuffed in. Look at this. She told me she had a kid staying in Shadwell. Do you know who that is? No. You don't pack pictures like this if you're coming back, though, do you? Hello? Hi. Uh, come on in. It's OK. Uh, we're police officers. Oh, no, has something happened to Sandra? Yeah. We found her unconscious. Will she be all right? Well, I hope so. She's going to hospital. Uh, do you know her, then? Well, I live next door. I see her a lot. And her boyfriend sometimes. She's in here! Susie, they've arrived! Yeah, yeah. I just want you to tell him that we'll be late. Okay. Can you tell us anything else? Well, I don't know if this is any use to you, but there was another bloke here last night. Not him. And? There was all sorts of shouting. You know how thin the walls are in these places? Did you hear what they were shouting about? Oh, sorry, my hearing's not what it was, but they were shouting all right. The other bloke was loud, angry. Got really scary. What time was this? About half ten. News was just finished, I remember that. Did you get a look at him? Yeah. He was a black fella. He had yellow hair, cut really short. Is there anything else you can tell us? Yeah. When he left, he got in a really flashy car. I thought he was a bit young to have one of those. Do you know him? Yeah, we do know him. Look, if you see or hear anything else, could you give us a call at Sun Hill, either DS Bolton or WDC Croft? Right. Do you know what she took? We think heroin. We found the needle. Is she going to be able to talk to us soon? I wouldn't hold my breath. You know, that description sounds like Paul Barnes. So what are you saying? I'm saying I think he might have tried to shut her up. What's Barnes got to do with it? Well, my snout had to tip off something about a dealer on the Jasmine Allen. And we believe Barnes was at her place last night. Straight after that, she phoned Susie, so we think it could be something on him. And your informant is St Hughes. You're saying that Barnes had a go at her? Maybe. It looks like an overdose. Not necessarily self-administered, though. Yeah, like Susie says, there is a question mark over whether she took it herself. Someone was at the snout's flat when we got there, but he did her honour. And what time was this? About half nine. Well, it wasn't Barnes, cos I was with him. I was checking out his alibi for this kneecapping. Susie. Don't ever do that to me again. If I tell the DCI it's an overdose, you just smile sweetly and nod, all right? Sarge. I'm Detective Sergeant Bolton. This is WDC Croft, on LCID. You Paul Barnes? Yeah. What now? Can we have a talk inside? No. Fine. Do you know Sandra Miles? 
Yeah? Oh, what's this about, huh? You were around her place last night. So? Sandra and me had things to talk about. Private things. I heard she was in hospital. News travels fast. In it. She should have taken better care of herself. Do you any idea what happened to her? I do, actually. If someone sorts out a Tom, he's usually a punter or a pimp. So who's a pimp? You know Neil Macklin? It's him you want to talk to. Are you saying that this Neil Macklin is involved? He was giving her the drugs. Now the best we had to keep it tart in line. Now me. Why is Barnes trying to drop this Neil Macklin in it? Sandra never mentioned her pimp. The Tom's down Bull Lane should know about him. Sandra said she was coming last night, but she didn't show up. And what about Neil Macklin? What about him? We heard he was Sandra's pimp. He is. It's not too bad as a go, which isn't saying much. Is he dealing? I wouldn't know. If you see Neil Macklin, tell him we want to speak to him about Sandra. I've been waiting for you. Have you got something? About half hour after you went away, this fella came to Sandra's looking for her. And? He knocked at her door. I told him she was in hospital. He was one of them taxi drivers. Minicab. Do you get the company? I wrote the name down. No, you can do whatever you like. There's no problem whatsoever. But with you in a minute, mate. Once you've dropped her off, can you pick up from Canley? Do you have a pickup this morning from the Jasmine Allen? Yeah. Some bloke wanted us to take a woman to Shedwell. Silly cow wasn't there. Normally, we just asked for the area, but this geezer made a point of it. Said that we were to take her to 102 Shadwell Road. Said to pick her up after 10. Thanks. That sounds a bloke who ordered the cab. Yeah, hello. I'm Detective Sergeant Bolton. This is WDC Croft from Sunhill Police. Can we come in, please? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Just got something on the cooker. What's this about? Do you know a Sandra Miles? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Hi, we're home. Phil? Hello. It's the police. Uh, this is my husband. Hi. Hi, what's this about? Yeah. She's in this photograph. No, that's my sister. Sandra. Sandra Miles. Sandra Deeds. She's... she's been missing. What's this about? Sandra's in hospital. She's had, um... what we think is an overdose. Is she alive? Yes, she is. I appreciate this is difficult, but we do have some questions we'd like to ask. Come on, let's go get some juice, yeah? Come on, Debbie. Debbie. Is that Sandra's little girl? Do you look after her? Yeah, yeah. The father disappeared when he heard Sandra was pregnant. That must be hard for you. <sighs> Had to be done. You know, I help all I can. I'm a nurse. You see someone shifts, but we do okay. Did you book a taxi to bring Sandra here today? Phil? No. Have you had any contact at all with her recently? No. Phil? No. Well, what has she been doing? Look, I've got a right to know. I'm sorry to have to tell you this. Your sister's involved in prostitution and drugs. I'll take care of that. Don't believe this! this. Coat. I know my sister and she's not a prostitute! How long has she been missing? Two years! Here, get your coat, come on. Go and ask Sharon to look after Debbie. There you go. Be good girl. Hi, okay, sweetheart. Hey. See you. You haven't heard from Sandra at all in the past two years? Oh, I did try to find her. I reported her missing to Shadwell Police Station. And Phil calls every month, don't you, Phil? Uh, yeah. Sarge, I called Shadwell Nick to pass on details about Sandra Miles. According to their records, no one's made any inquiries about a missing person file for a year. Doesn't surprise me. Do you remember that crackdown on curb crawling about four months ago? Yeah, that's when I met Sandra. Well, I wanted to see if Paul Barnes had been hanging around Bull Lane, so I went through the records. No sign of Paul Barnes. But Phil Hobbs has been cautioned twice for cruising Bull Lane. Phil? Oh, Mr Hobbs knows a lot more than he's letting on. It's 
it's only news. They won't tell us, but I know the score. She won't come out of it. Mr Hobbs, earlier on you told us that you made regular calls to Shadwell Police Station, is that right? Are you aware that all inquiries are recorded? Yes, Michelle just kept asking and asking and asking, so I told her I called. There's another matter. Is your wife aware that you've been cautioned twice for curb crawling? What is it with you lot? I was looking for my sister-in-law. I went all over London. I had to do something. What did I do that was so wrong? You lied to us. And to your wife. Oh, come on. What was I supposed to say? Yes, darling, I've been done for curb crawling, but I was looking for your sister honest. Not the situation which led Sandra to run away. Michelle's easily upset. Did the situation have anything to do with drugs? Yeah, sort of. Not long after Debbie was born, Sandra decided to go back to college, where she met this bloke who got her into drugs. It was nothing serious, you know, just joints, uh, and I think she did a few E's. Anyway, she was besotted with him. Do you know this bloke's name? Oh, yeah. Neil Macklin. Detective Sergeant Bolton? Yeah? Phone. Thanks. Uh, where were you this morning at about half nine? Are you joking? You think I had something to do with this? Why aren't you out looking for Macklin instead of hassling me? Mr Hobbs, this morning. I was dropping Debbie at her playgroup. Fine. Do you think Macklin's behind this? Well, we're still at a very early stage in our investigation. Well, I'm certain he did it. What makes you so sure? Sandra's tough. She's been through a lot. I mean, both her parents died. Her boyfriend did a vanishing act before his baby was even born. But then this Macklin pops up and she just falls to pieces. Remember, it was me that called you, right? We'll make sure you get a gold star. It was Paul Barnes. He got one of his heavies to stick the needle in. Why would he do that? She's been two-timing him with me. Is that why Barnes came round to your flat last night? Yeah. He was giving her a warning. Threatening Sandra. Know what I mean? You're telling us that Barnes was jealous of your relationship with the Tart, so we decided to teach her a lesson? Yeah. Come off it. There must be more to it than that. No, there isn't. Did you hear these threats? No, I was out. But when I come home, Sandra was in a terrible state, you know. So where do you fit in? <laughs> it's nothing to do with me. It was Barnes. You got her on the game. <laughs> Listen, I'm a bit sure. Can you get this for me? Yeah. John, I took a message for you. Apparently there's something you'll find interesting in Sandra Miles' flat. Did the caller leave a name? Uh, fat chance, but it was uh, from a mobile or a car phone. I could hear the engine revving in the background. Right, cheers, Alistair. So you point us back to Sandra's? Anything we find there is going to take us back to Sandra or Macklin. So who's already tried to drop Macklin in it? Barnes. We'll have another look. I'll get onto the council, see if they'll let us back in. How did you get in? The hospital gave me Sandra's keys. We need to conduct a thorough search of the place. Have you touched anything? No. Well, don't. Have you found Macklin here? Yeah? We've spoken to him. And? I'm sorry, we can't say anything else. Right. I get it. You'll tell us when you can be bothered. How did you know Sandra lives here? We didn't say anything. Look. No. Phil, whatever you can't say in front of Michelle, you can say here. I'll get Sandra's stuff later. A man ordered a taxi to take Sandra to your address this morning. Phil? Sarge? Can you press the last number redial on Sandra's phone?
We're conducting a criminal investigation here. Why are you lying to us? While I was looking for Sandra, I found her on the street. Bull Lane. I kept checking her, you know, making sure she was still around. Did you speak to her? Not at first, no. Then a couple of months ago, Debbie started school. So I decided to tell Sandra. All she really wanted to do was to come home. She'd have done anything to get out of here. That's why I didn't tell Michelle. God, she's gonna kill me when she finds out I've been lying to her. She blames me for Sandra running away. Why? What had it got to do with you? I was the one that told Sandra to choose between Macklin and us. And she chose him. So when did Sandra call you? About nine this morning. Did she mention a Paul Barnes? No. She was scared, you know, really scared. I thought she was going to change her mind, that's why I called a taxi. Phil, you in love with Sandra? You like to stay close to the goods, don't you, Neil? Not mine. Come on, Sandra's. Oi! Oh, that's it! Enough! Right! Enough! You are both ah. nicked! Ah. You for assault, and you for possession of a controlled substance! All right. Up on your feet. Up on your feet. Looks like someone's grassed you up. Wonder who it could be, eh? It's good to see the scum being cleared of the streets. Well done, officer. I'm showing the suspect exhibit JB1, which is a plastic package believed to contain a quantity of heroin. A dealer's amount uh, isn't for personal use, is it, Neil? I was going to hand it in, Garvonis. You knew where it was in Sandra's flat because you hid it there. You should start thinking of any way you can help yourself. And what form might the self-help take? Barnes wouldn't have had a go at Sandra just because of you. We think she had some information on Barnes. Now, what was it? Look, I'll hold my hand up for the drugs, but I'm not grassing on Barnes. Do the drugs belong to Barnes? No. He hasn't got anything like that. That's new stuff, that is. Fresh in from Turkey. Really, really pure. Why so pure? You get more money if you cut things in, dilute it. That's my calling card. If I let the punters know I sell good stuff, create a bit of a buzz, you know. And then you can start cutting things in. <laughs> Barnes has got the Jasmine Allen sewn up. He wouldn't like another dealer working on his patch. Did he know what you were up to? Look, I sold some of that yesterday, and he got to hear about it, so he comes around to have a go at me, and I'm not in. Poor old Sandra is, so he puts two and two together and has a go at her. What does Sandra know about Barnes? <laughs> you must think I'm really stupid. I'm not going to tell you that. Well, Barnes has certainly made his presence felt. Macklin's terrified. Well, keep at him. I don't want to put the pressure on you, John, but right now this is the only way we've got at getting at Barnes. Go. Sarge. I think we've got something here. No! He hasn't got anything like that. That's new stuff, that is. Fresh in from Turkey. Really, really pure. We've heard from the lab. The heroin Sandra had taken was really, really pure. Do you know what happens to an addict when they take pure heroin? Their body can't take it. It results in either coma or death. I'm showing the suspect exhibit JB1. Did you deliberately give Sandra an overdose? <laughs> no. She did it herself. She'll tell you when she gets better. She's not going to get better. Do you understand that, Neil? It wasn't Barnes in the flat this morning, was it? It was you. So why don't you tell us what happened? <laughs> she wanted to go home. 
she wanted to see a kid. She'd had enough of it, you know. I mean. Then when Barnes come round, that was it. She was really scared. She wanted out. She was only staying for the skag. You had to use heroin to keep her there. I love her. I couldn't just... just let her go. But you knew she was going. Yeah, I caught her on the phone to her brother-in-law this morning. She was all packed up, you know. I couldn't think what to say. So I cut her off a bag of the new stuff. She couldn't help herself. I told her to go easy on it. And? Uh, I went back into the bedroom. And I left her to do the business. By the time I come out, she wasn't going nowhere. And then you was at the door, so I legged it. Neil. Sandra was a police informant. We believed that she had some information for us about Barnes. What was it? You don't give a monkeys about her, do you? You just want to get Barnes. Yeah. But I want you to ask yourself this. Barnes grasses you up, and not just for the drugs. He tells us that you were responsible for what happened to Sandra. Now, why do you think he'd do that? I'm selling on his patch and he wants me out. That's right. And he knows if he can send you down for dealing, then he's in the clear for now. So if you don't want to tell us about Barnes, that's fine. But you'll be doing him a really big favour. Flat number 53 on the estate. That's where he cuts his stuff up and shifts it out. Flat number 53. You tell him I told you. Thank you. Macklin's lying. She never took an overdose. I'm sorry, Phil. I think she did. Didn't say anything to save his skin. I spoke to Sandra on the phone this morning. She was desperate to come home. She wouldn't touch her stuff. <sighs> Phil, Sandra's a heroin addict. She couldn't just drop it like that. What did she sound like when you spoke to her? Yeah, OK, she was really scared, but, you know, I did the big brother thing. I calmed her down and told her everything was going to be fine. I think she just had to have one last hit. Look, if it's any consolation, uh, Sandra's helped to get a lead on Paul Barnes. Who? Paul Barnes. She was about to inform on him. She was about to tell you about Macklin. When you went round there this morning, you were supposed to arrest Macklin. Why would she do that? Because I told her to. Macklin would have come sniffing around. He wouldn't have just let her go. I couldn't take that chance, not with a kid. And Sandra agreed to this? It was the only way to get rid of him. I did it to protect her. 